All right, this is Mr. Mason N, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to find the unknown radius of a cylinder when the surface area of the cylinder is given and the height of the cylinder is given. So the first thing that we're going to do is write out what the formula is to find the surface area of a cylinder. So the formula is surface area is equal to 2 times pi r to the second power plus 2 pi r h. So this part of our equation just gives us the area of the two circular surfaces, and this part of our equation gives us the area of the lateral portion of our cylinder. So the first thing that we're going to do is substitute everything that is given in the problem. Now in this problem, the surface area is given, so we're going to replace SA or surface area with 48 pi, and that is equal to 2 pi, and we don't know what the radius is, so we have to leave that in R, squared plus 2 pi R multiplied by 5. The height of our cylinder is 5, so we just replace this H with 5. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is simplify this equation a bit. We are going to write this as 48 pi is equal to 2 pi r squared. And then we're going to multiply this 2 here with this 5. So we're going to write that as 10 pi times r. All right, now at this point in the problem, we have one term here, a term here, and a term here. So what I'm going to do is see if each one of these three terms has something in common. Now, if we take a look at each one of these coefficients, 48, 2, and 10, the greatest common factor of all three of these values is 2. And also, each one of these contains pi in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this term by 2 pi, and we're going to divide this term by 2 pi, and we're going to divide this term by 2 pi. So if we divide 48 by 2, that gives us 24. And pi divided by pi is just 1. And 24 times 1 is 24. So pi just cancels out with that term. And over here, the 2's cancel out. The pi's cancel out, leaving us just with r to the second power. Plus 10 divided by 2 is 5. And these pi terms cancel out, leaving us with just r. All right, at this point in our problem, what we should recognize is we have a quadratic equation right here. Remember, the standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is our ax to the second power term. This is our bx term. And this is our C term over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 24, or the C term, and move it over on the right-hand side of our equation. So if we do the opposite of positive 24, that's negative 24. So we're just going to write minus 24 on the other side. And we have 0 over here. So what we really have is 0 equals r squared plus 5r minus 24. Now what we have to do to solve for r is factor out this quadratic, allowing us to figure out what the r value actually is. So what I'm going to do is draw two sets of parentheses. And I know that this first term is r squared. So in this position, we must have an r. In this position, we must have an r because the product of these two values always equals this product right here. So r times r is r to the second power. Now what we write here and what we write here must be multiplied to make our c term, in this case negative 24. But what I have to do is I have to think about a combination of numbers that when being multiplied not only produces a negative 24, but when I add is going to make this middle term here or positive 5. So I think first about 4 times 6, but I cannot combine 4 and 6 in any way to make 5. So I'm going to try 3 and 8. Now 3 times 8 is 24, 
However, I can combine 3 and 8 in such a way to make positive 5. So what I'm going to do is write a plus 8 here, and I'm going to write a minus 3 here. So positive 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. However, when we take our middle two values here, positive 8 and r, and multiply those, and when we take the outer terms, the r and the negative 3, that gives us negative 3r. When I combine those terms, we get positive 5r, which is our middle term here. Now that we have factored this quadratic out, all we have to do is solve each one of these factors set equal to 0. So we have r plus 8 equals 0, and we have r minus 3 equals 0. So for this first situation, r has to equal negative 8, because negative 8 plus 8 equals 0. And for the second factor, r must equal positive 3, because 3 minus 3 equals 0. So negative 8 is one of the solutions, and positive 3 is the other solution. Now let's think about the length or the distance of any line or any dimension of any figure. The radius cannot be negative, therefore we can eliminate negative 8 as a possible solution, which means the radius length of our cylinder is equal to 3 centimeters.